Hello, my friends. It's good to be with you today, albeit virtually. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you are enjoying being with your Westside community this Sunday morning. I have an alert set up in my Gmail account that sends me news about topics that interest me. Do you know about these Google alerts? Well, if you have a Gmail account, you're able to receive alerts you set up for keywords you find interesting. You can receive these topical alerts as they happen throughout the day or all of the alerts in one email that covers the last 24 hours. I have several of these alerts set up for a variety of topics. One of the alerts is set up for the word Unitarian, and every day I'll get a summary of links of news stories which included that word. Now there will only be a few stories in the Daily Digest. After all, Unitarian Universalists don't make the news all that often. Many times it's an article introducing a new Unitarian Universalist minister to a community through the local newspaper. And recently there have been many news story alerts with our General Assembly, which is the annual me meeting of the Unitarian Universalist Association. But I wonder if you might guess what Unitarian alerts I receive more than anything else. Well, it's obituaries and death notices. And I read as many of these as I can because they are often awe-inspiring when you read about what one of our religious relatives has accomplished in life. Here's one I received just this week. Sonia Christopher, a former contestant on season one of Survivor, has died. She was 87 years old. The copy reads, the news of Christopher's passing was first broken on X, formerly Twitter, by Liz Wilcox. Wilcox currently serves, or stars, on the 46th season of Survivor. Along with a photo of the two, Wilcox shared a brief message announcing Christopher's passing. Today, the legend herself, Sonia Christopher of season one, passed away, the statement read. I had the pleasure of meeting her on Christmas. She had so much spunk and love for Survivor and what the show brought to her life. I hope you're singing and playing your heart out somewhere, beautiful Sonia. The story continues. Sonia Christopher made history on Survivor. She was the first contestant voted off of season one. That made her the first person voted off the show ever. Christopher was voted off after she made a few mistakes that led to her team losing that first week's challenge. However, she remained a friend and a fan of the show for the rest of her life. She continued to keep up with each new season and its contestants. No flowers are requested, but donations may be sent to Mount Diablo Unitarian Universalist Church of Walnut Creek, California. Now, that's kind of cool, isn't it? To have UU representation that way. In many of these Unitarian Universalist obituaries and death notices, I read about people who have accomplished or participated in many wonderful things. And it's fun to be reminded of how many lovely people affiliate with Unitarian Universalist communities. In reading these obituaries, I've witnessed many unsung celebrities formerly in our midst. I'd learned about UUs who've marched with Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I've read about UUs who have made big discoveries at major universities. I've read about UUs who were immigration attorneys and social justice movers and shakers. And I've read about the first person kicked off of a television reality show and many others who were simply proud of their UU faith. In some ways, reading these obituaries reminds me about those lists we sometimes see of famous UUs. These are created, I suspect, to lend some sort of credibility to our faith and congregations. Well, if this famous person is a UU, someone might think, then those UUs must not be so bad. It's sort of like a celebrity endorsement. Reading these obituaries reminds me too that all of our people are extraordinary that even though we are ordinary in many ways, we seem to have this extra capacity for empathy and love. 
But you know, reading obituaries also reminds me that we all die. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've accomplished. It doesn't matter if you are monetarily wealthy or not. From what I have read, and perhaps you've come across words to the same effect, all of us, every single one of us will someday die. Every single one of us. And we don't generally like this idea, this idea of non-existence. Like every other animal on this planet, we have an innate drive to exist, to be alive. Our bodies, more often than not, do a pretty good job of keeping us alive for some time. And our lifespans have increased tremendously through the years. But all of us, every single one of us, there will come a time when our body no longer will support life. It can take us no further. For whatever reason, the body ceases to function and we die. Some of us will go gently into the night. Others of us will take the poet Dylan Thomas's advice and rage against the possibility of death. And as I think about it, I honestly don't know which is better. A middle-aged man had a heart attack and was taken to the hospital. While on the operating table, he had a near-death experience. Seeing God, he asked, is my time up? God answered, no. In fact, you have another 40 years, six months, and eight days to live. Upon recovery, the man decided to stay in the hospital and have a facelift, liposuction, and because of an ample beer belly, decided to get a tummy tuck. He even had someone come in and color his hair to a darker shade. Since he had so much more time to live, he thought he might as well make the most of it. After his last operation, he was released from the hospital. While crossing the street on his way home, he was struck by a bus and immediately died. Arriving in front of God, he demanded, I thought you said I had another 40 years to live. Why didn't you pull me out from under the path of that bus? And God said, well, I didn't recognize you. Well, I hope you found that funny because I thought we might need a little humor break before proceeding because I think about death a lot, <laughs> probably more than most. I can't help but believe it goes back to my childhood cancer, where doctors weren't sure if I would survive the amputation of my left arm and the subsequent chemotherapy. I was also happy to later survive cancer again as an adult at the age of 39. Now today, with every new ache or pain that comes along, I wonder, is that a new cancer? And let me assure you, as I age, there are more aches and pains that come along. I'll wonder often, is this my third strike and I'm out? In other words, is this new pain, what I imagine to be a new cancer, is this going to kill me? Given my experience, it doesn't seem that far out of the realm of possibility. And we hear so much about early detection of cancer that I want my primary care physician to get everything checked out when something doesn't feel quite right. I've spoken to a lot of people who've experienced a cancer diagnosis. And what I do in my wor worrying is a behavior or thought process that many cancer survivors are familiar with and work through. But most of us, whether we've had cancer or not, are afraid of dying for a variety of reasons and prefer it not happen at all. We don't like to think about it. We don't like to talk about it. And most people, most often, do very little to plan for it. My mother died in the March of 2020, right as COVID was coming to the fore. Her death wasn't COVID related. and In fact, she'd been dying for a long time. 
She also was a two-time cancer survivor and had been diagnosed with a thing called progressive supranuclear palsy, and it's a horrible way to die. Like many of you, when something frightens me or makes me uneasy, I, I have this need to learn more about it. So I immersed myself in reading. I read a bunch of articles about the disease, and I read loads of books about death and dying, end-of-life care, and grief. I also completed a training program to become an end-of-life doula or death doula. Is this term familiar to you? Just like a birth doula can companion or support someone bringing life into this world, the death doula companions or supports someone as their life leaves this world. I thought the training was very good and I learned a great deal. In addition to all the good content, I also learned I didn't want to actually be an end-of-life doula. However, because of the program, I was much better prepared for my mother's death. I knew a great deal more about the dying process, and I was able to ask questions of staff my family found helpful to know. For that, I'm very grateful. I also learned that more and more people are open to talking about death, recognizing that the larger society has difficulty confronting this issue. What about death cafes? Have you all heard of death cafes? These are simply groups of people who get together to talk about death, perhaps what they find fascinating about death, but mostly what they fear. Here's what their website has to say. At a death cafe, people, often strangers, gather to eat cake, drink tea, and discuss death. Our objective is to increase awareness of death with a view to helping people make the most of their finite lives. A death cafe is a group-directed discussion of death with no agenda, objectives, or themes. It is a discussion group rather than a grief support or counseling session. It goes on to say, our death cafes are always free, always offered in accessible, respectful, and confidential spaces, never with an intention of leading people to any conclusion, product, or course of action, and hopefully alongside refreshing drinks and nourishing food even cake. Death cafes were started in the United Kingdom in 2011. In 2012, the first one was offered in the United States. I've seen death cafes offered in private homes, in public libraries, in local taverns, in churches or other houses of worship, even UU congregations, and I've seen them in actual cafes. Death cafes now occur all over the world, and their popularity, I think, is a direct result of people wanting, perhaps even needing, to talk about their fears and concerns around dying. To have those same or similar concerns acknowledged by others, others who also struggle with the idea of death, well, this can be very supportive and validating. Just knowing there are others out there who are going through something similar can be very powerful. Surely, we Unitarian Universalists can understand that feeling, that feeling of knowing you're not alone when loneliness seems so pervasive. While thinking about dying has me scared to death, I believe we do a disservice to ourselves and others if we don't. I believe we need to talk about death, and I believe we need to talk about death with others. And just like talking about sex won't make you pregnant, we also know talking about dying won't kill you. Reading about dying won't kill you either. 
Now, you don't have to read all the things I've read. You don't need to take a course to become an end-of-life doula, although if that sounds kind of interesting to you, please let me know as I have some recommendations. But I've created a mini bibliography with just a handful of books and a few websites related to end of life that I found most helpful in my learning. If thinking about dying has you scared to death, send me an email and I'll send you the list. Most of the books will be available from your public library. Now I will attempt to return these requests all at once in one batch email. So if you would, please do me a favor and in the subject line of the email you send to me, please type the words dying, D-Y-I-N-G, sucks, S-U-X. That's right, my friends, dying sucks. As we rise and body our spirit and join together in singing our closing hymn number six, just as long as I have breath.